Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd in the Street and today we're taking a look at Latte Doc. Alright everyone, so for a long time, the dock in macOS has been a big defining factor of the macOS desktop. If you've ever seen a screenshot of a Mac, you've seen that dock probably at the bottom of the screen where it is by default. And for many years, there have been programs that have attempted to add the dock to Windows or Linux computers because people who don't have Macs still might like the idea of having a dock where all of their icons go. It's actually not the most efficient use of space, but it is pretty and easy to understand. And so quite a while ago, I'm talking probably around 2010, I tried out many different free open source docs on Linux. There were quite a few options back in the day. Most of them are no longer being actively developed today because most of them were pretty gimmicky. The point was just to copy the Max doc onto your Linux computer. However, recently, within the past couple of years, there has been a new doc in development and it's gotten quite popular. That doc is called Latte Doc. And what makes it very interesting is that Unlike a lot of these standalone dock gimmicks, these little apps that have existed just to add the dock, that have existed in the past, Latte Dock, it's built on the KDE Plasma panel system. KDE is extremely configurable. If you're using a Plasma desktop, you can already add new panels, resize panels, move things around on your panels. And so what Latte Dock does is it registers itself as a Plasma panel. That means it integrates extremely nicely into your KDE desktop. You can put KDE widgets into the dock. And it also provides an app launching functionality similar to a Mac OS dock. So I was actually using Latte Dock for a little while on my machine. I'm no longer using it on a regular basis just because, like I said, it's not actually a very efficient use of space. Most of the time when I need to launch an application, I hit the meta key to open up the kickoff menu, the start menu in Plasma, and I start typing for the application I want, which searches, and then I just press enter when the search result comes up. And so taking up space with a big row of icons and then having to move my mouse onto those icons when I want to open up an application, it was cool to have. It's not exactly my cup of tea for actually having my desktop set up that way. But obviously macOS is very popular and a lot of people might want a dock out there. So just in case you're looking to spice up your desktop, maybe you're using KDE and the default Windows-like layout is just getting a little boring. I thought it might be fun to take a look at Latte Dock. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and cut to the desktop. All right, guys, and here we are on my desktop. I have adjusted my screen resolution to actually be 1920 by 1080 for this video because with a dock, I'm not going to be able to crop the video very easily. So depending on your Linux distribution, you might use a different package manager to install Latte Dock, but I did take a look and it looks like the package is called Latte-Dock on every major distribution. So these are the commands you would use depending on what distro you are on. And once you have Latte Dock installed, you may need to start it. You can add it to your KDE auto start settings if you're using KDE Plasma, or there are a variety of different ways to auto launch applications depending on the desktop environment you're using. But if I open up Latte Dock here, you can see it opens up where I had it configured at the top of my screen. And this is what I had mine configured to look like when I was using it. This is actually not really the default look at all, but as you can see, Latte Dock is a flat design. That's one thing that I do wish was different about it. It's this 2D box design, which looks very similar actually to the current Mac OS desktop. This is a screenshot of the latest version of Mac OS, and it's really interesting because Apple went back to this 2D design as well. So Latte Dock actually matches what you get on a current Mac. But I always think it's funny, the current Mac OS dock being 2D, it looks extremely similar to the Mac OS Tiger dock which this was around the Windows XP era in terms of years. And it was also a 2D dock. As you can see, it looks about the same as what they have today. Now, around the time that Windows Vista came out, Apple came out with Mac OS Leopard, and it had this 3D dock. And this was what a lot of the apps that I mentioned earlier tried to replicate, was this 3D reflective shelf. I just think that this looks a lot cooler than the previous Tiger dock, and I couldn't believe it when Apple went back in time to the older flat design. So if there was a, a skin or a theme for Latte Dock that would add this 3D sort of reflective dock like Mac OS Leopard had, then I might start using it again on a day-to-day -day basis just because it looks so cool. 
But yeah, I did just want to draw the comparison to Mac OS since obviously that's what a lot of people know about Docs from. Now, since I've already configured this, it's not really a fair example right off the bat of what Latte Doc can do and what it's like to actually use it. So I am going to remove my current Latte Doc config and I am going to kill Latte Doc here. And after doing that, I am going to open it up again. And this is what it looks like by default, if you've never used it before. It's going to show up at the bottom of your screen, and it's going to show you the running applications on your system. Um, incidentally, I have nine virtual desktops, and I've got quite a few other applications running right now. So that's why you're seeing this. Uh, so as you can see, by default, Latte Doc is going to place itself on the bottom of your screen, which is going to sort of conflict with the default plasma panel. I am going to try and move this plasma panel. Let me unlock my widgets. Panel options, configure panel, screen edge. Let's drag the default panel to the top of our screen because this looks similar-ish to Mac OS. Obviously, Mac OS doesn't have a start menu at the top left of the screen, but now we can have the dock at the bottom of our screen behaving normally. So by default, there is a sort of shelf design. You can see it is 2D. It's not reflective or anything. But we've just got indicators for all of our running applications and quite a large zoom factor by default as well. So we can right click on this dock and we can go to dock settings, which is going to let us configure our dock with the Latte Dock settings manager. We can select which screen it's showing up on. I've got two displays plugged in right now and we're showing on the primary display. You can display the dock on any edge of the screen, just like in Mac OS. I'm not even sure Mac OS lets you display the dock on the top of the screen, uh, but you can see we can display on the left side here, which might remind you a little bit of the Ubuntu Unity desktop environment, and a lot of people have been using Latte Dock to sort of replicate that setup as well. But switching back to the bottom of the screen here, since that is the iconic positioning, we can set our alignment if you want your dock to show up in one of the corners. Here, of course, we can decide how we want the dock to behave in terms of hiding and showing itself. If you want your dock to always hide itself, whether there's a window there or not, you can do that. So now the dock doesn't show up unless we actually move our mouse to the bottom of the screen. We can set the dock to always be visible, or we can do what I was doing, which is dodging active windows. And so if I open up K right here, and I drag it onto this side of the screen. You can see right now the dock is on the screen and as soon as I drag this window down here, the dock is going to move out of the way because this is an active window. Now if I click off of this window, it's no longer active so the dock comes back, but if I move my focus back to this window, the dock goes away again. So you can have that happen. You can have it only dodge maximized windows. You can have it dodge all windows even if they're not active. So it really does just depend on how you want this to behave and you can configure it accordingly. It's great that the configurability is there because this is highly subjective. Now I find that the default delay for hiding and showing is a little bit too long. I like it to hide itself a little bit quicker and to show itself pretty much immediately when I move the window, as you can see, onto the dock and then away from the dock. It comes up much quicker after adjusting that. Once again, great configurability. We can also take a look at our appearance tab here. This is where we can set the initial size of the icons. So I usually like to make my dock a little bit smaller because it makes me feel like my screen is bigger. But for this video, we probably want to set the icons a little bit bigger so you guys can see them better. You can select your zoom percentage. And once again, I find the default zoom percentage a little bit too much. It looks too cartoony. This is a bit more, even maybe a little lower. Um, yeah, I find that that subtle zooming is much better, much more elegant in my opinion. The length here doesn't really affect anything with the default settings, although you can set a sort of override for the maximum length of the dock, say to 50% of your screen. By default, the dock is only going to take up as much space as it needs. And down here, you can turn on or off that background and you can increase the size of the background, for instance, the way that I did to make it look a little bit more like Mac OS with the full box behind the dock. Or you can make it smaller to pretend like there's a shelf down there, even though really it's just a box. You can also make it slightly transparent, which I think is really nice. We'll make it about 50% there. And now if we close our settings, you can see what it looks like. And if we put a window back there um, and then we click off of it, well, that transparency does not exactly seem to be working, which is interesting to see. Moving on from that little quirk though, we've got one last tab in our simple settings here, and this has to do with tasks. 
Tasks are how Plasma is going to separate out what is displayed in this particular panel and what is not. For instance, like I said, I've got nine virtual desktops running, so most of these applications are on those other desktops. I've got a Blender render running, you know, and I didn't want to stop that when I came and made this video. So we can filter our dock to just the current virtual desktop with a checkbox right here, and you can see most of that stuff falls out, and now we've just got the things that I'm using to record here. We can also show only tasks from our current screen. So I'm on a multi-monitor setup right now, and now you're not seeing the recording applications anymore because they're all on the other screen, of course. If I drag one of these things onto the screen, then it will show up in the dock, and if I drag it back off the screen, then it goes away. So I'm going to leave those options checked to make the rest of this video a little bit easier to understand. And right now we have a pretty functional dock. We've got a couple of shortcuts in here. I can open up a new Firefox window. It opened on the wrong screen there, but it did open. Let's try Dolphin here. Uh, once again, opened on the incorrect screen. But you can see when we do have an application open, we've got the little dots that is signifying that the application is running in the background, and then whatever is currently selected is going to have that full line underneath it. I think the app running indicators look very nice. Nothing really to be desired there, in my opinion. Now, there are some advanced options for Latte Dock. You can actually have more than one dock on your screen at the same time, uh, which I think is just getting to be a little bit too much. Let's close this. Oop. Well, I just closed an application there, but let's try and remove this side dock because I only want the bottom one right now. But since these are like plasma panels, like I said before, you can add multiple of them and configure them differently. We can also turn on our advanced settings here, and that is going to give us some extra options. For instance, right now, the dock is running in dock mode, but we can actually change it to panel mode, in which case it's going to be a full bar across the screen, just like a normal plasma panel. So it's interesting that you can do that as well. With the advanced options turned on, we've got some additional settings in each of our sections up here. Right now, you can see we've got the tooltips of the names of the windows showing up when we hover over these items. We can turn that off if we want. You can see this option is turned on by default to activate items through the mouse wheel, so I can actually use my mouse wheel to scroll over an icon. I can't scroll through the items like I can with my top plasma dock, but if you hover over an item and you scroll at all, then it's going to select that option. If we come over to appearance here, you can see we've got some extra options in the advanced section as well. Let's increase the size of our background here again to better see some of these options. We can choose to draw an outline around our dock, which sort of frames it. We can turn off the blur in the back of the dock and the shadow. We can change our theme here, as you can see, which is interesting. This lighter color looks even more like the current version of Mac OS. You can see it is sort of glitching our analog clock there, and so we'll turn it back to plasma. And as you can see, there are some small glitches here. This application is not perfectly written. There are a lot of just little visual glitches. Um, and that's what a lot of people give KDE a hard time for in general. Um, and Latte Dock, I find KDE itself doesn't really have a lot of those anymore, but Latte Dock is definitely a little bit more rough around the edges since it is a, an add-on to KDE. And that's, again, one of the reasons why I'm not using it, but if you are wanting this sort of interface, I think that it's uh, certainly stuff you can work through. So the advanced options also open up this entirely new section of our settings called Effects. By default, when we do open up an application, you can see our icon bounces for a second there, which is cool, but you can turn that off if you want. We can change our indicator theme as well from the default to the plasma indicator, which is more similar to the, the lines that we have underneath our taskbar items. You can see those lines on top of the icons now. We can still put them at the bottom of the dock, which looks a bit better. And I'm actually going to turn that back because I don't think that looks as good. You can put those little lights on top of the icons if you want to do that for some reason. If we have more than one window of an application open at the same time, then it is going to have more than one dot. And we can configure the way that those work. Um, as you can see now, the, the several dots still appear even when one of those is active. So really just all kinds of configurability here. You could play with this for quite a while with all these different settings in true KDE nature. Now by default, these are all actually the same widget, these three icons right here. And then we do have an analog clock widget. As you can see, it's displaying the time, and then I can also click on it to get a calendar just like our digital clock in the top right of the screen. But these three widgets here, or these three icons, are all part of a single launcher widget. It's the Latte Tasks applet is what it's called, and we can remove it with this button. And so now that's gone. And you might be wondering why we would want to do that. 
Well, I actually got to a point on my system where I didn't want to use Latte Doc to switch between applications. I just wanted to use it as a launcher, so I didn't care about having the indicators underneath the icons anymore because I, I was going to continue using the taskbar to switch between apps. When I've got a lot of different windows open, I just find it's more efficient to, for instance, Dolphin here. I can switch between the two different windows really easily with a drop-down list or a pop-up list. I can see thumbnails of each one of the windows with the default plasma panel. And so I just find it's not as efficient to click on a dock and then you can see I have this weird full screen thing that comes up where I can select the window. It's fine when there's two windows, but Firefox, for instance, I've got, I've got way too many windows open in Firefox for that to work. So I've got my setup that I usually use with all my different virtual desktops and my, my taskbar. Uh, but I did want to use Latte Dock since it looked cool just as a launcher. And so what I did was I went into the dock settings. I went to the bottom of the tasks section and I removed the tasks applet. Now we can come down here to our dock. And like I said, this is a plasma panel. We can add all the same widgets to this panel as we can for all of our other panels. So if we come down here and we click add widgets, I can add a quick launch widget and I'm gonna drag that into my dock here. And now I can right click on this and add a launcher and I can select for instance, Firefox. So once again, this widget is no longer a tasks widget. It's not going to show me if an item is open or not, but it will continue to launch new instances of Firefox when I click on it. Now there are a couple problems with using this quick launch widget. For one thing, you can probably tell that the Firefox icon is stuck a little lighter than it's supposed to be right now. That's a visual glitch in Latte Doc. And if we actually turn down the size of our icons a little bit, so now the Firefox icon is at least fitting a little better in our dock. The lightness bug is still there. So once again, that's why I stopped using it, were those kinds of visual glitches. Uh, but obviously I'm well outside the normal use case for this right now. Now if I come to this quick launch and I add some more launchers here, let's say I want KWrite as a launcher and I also want MuseScore as a launcher. You can see that that launcher is now tiny and it's showing up all as one icon in our dock. If I make the dock a little bit smaller or if I make the icons a little bit smaller, Oh, I guess if I make them bigger, that will at least cause them all to display at a normal icon size. However, now they're not zooming because it's all one big item that is always just zoomed in. You can see my analog clock still zooms, but this quick launch does not zoom. So what I ended up doing was I dragged a bunch of different quick launch widgets down here, which is going to use more RAM actually on your system. But now I can add a single launcher to each quick launch widget. I can do Firefox on that one. I can do KWrite on this one, and I can do MuseScore in this quick launch widget. So this is using more RAM, um, but it does look nicer. And now I can come back into my dock settings and I can make the icons a little bit smaller so that those show up a little nicer there. And now they zoom normally or fairly normally as well. So yeah, this is the way that my dock was configured. Uh, when I first opened it up and I had a, a bunch of different icons at the top of the screen at the beginning of this video, this was how I was using it. And I actually removed the clock because I don't find that particularly helpful. A tiny little analog clock that's almost too small for me to see. But yeah, if you're wanting to shake up your, your desktop a little bit, if you find yourself getting bored with the default desktop and you want to play around with a different sort of style, um, or if you're just looking for a nicer looking quick launch option. I know you can add quick launch icons to your default plasma taskbar, but it might not look very nice. So this is a much nicer looking, at, you know, a very pretty quick launch bar if you're wanting to add one of those. This program is absolutely here and you're absolutely welcome to use it. This is an official KDE app at this point. It is sort of an add-on. It's not part of Plasma, but it is on the KDE infrastructure. So you can find a Git mirror on KDE's GitHub page. And you can also find Latte Doc on the KDE store, interestingly enough, as a Plasma 5 add-on. So I hope that that's at least a little bit entertaining. I hope somebody out there sees that and decides to play around with it. If this video was helpful or entertaining to you, I would ask that you go to nerdclub.nots.co. The link is down in the description and consider becoming a Nerd Club member for just $3 a month. I really enjoy showing off these little Linux apps um, and I'd love to have more time and resources to make more of these videos. But for right now, that's everything I had to talk about. So I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd on the Street and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.